proceed with these lessons. A short explanation of each, however, may as well be given at this point. One. Sorry, I'm late. The of mentalism. The all is mine. The universe is mental. The Kabbalion. This principle embodies the truth that all is mine. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the terms of material universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit, which in itself is unknowable and undefinable, but which may be considered and thought of as an universal, infinite living mind. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe as a whole and in its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all, in which mind we live and move and have our being. This principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention and which, without such explanation, are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. An understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and to apply the same to his well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is enabled to apply intelligently the great mental laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner. With the master key in his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. This principle explains the true nature of energy, power, and matter, and why and how all these are subordinate to the mastery of mind. One of the old hermetic masters wrote, long ages ago, he who grasped the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path to mastery. And these words are as true today as at the time they were first written. Without this mastery key, mastery is impossible, and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. Two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. The Kabbalion. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic axiom ran in these words. As above, so below. As below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is an universal law. The ancient hermetists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown. Its use even tore aside the veils of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the <coughs> goddess might be caught. Just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements while seated in his observatory, so a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown. Studying the monad, he understands the archangel. 3. The principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. The Kabbalion. The principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion, everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses and which each new scientific discovery 
tends to verify. And yet, this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt. This principle explains that the differences between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibrations are so low as to seem at rest. What's up, everyone? Between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of the vibration. spectrum. From corpuscle and electron. How do we understand the universe? The various degrees of goodness and what things are. And one man's trash is another man's cash, right? Everyone's having a wonderful day. Um, just got this idea this morning to show you guys a whole different concept. Um, flow like water. The path of least resistance in production models and um, a whole different concept than what a sweet spot just might be um, so i spent a little bit late getting on i was spent some time trying to figure out this i'm still trying to get figure what settings if anyone knows where what advanced settings to change my rotation it's not my phone and i can't find it on the youtube and I might need to load YouTube Studio. I don't know. Um, but I don't have it on the phone. I have it in the computer. And anyhow, um, woke up this morning and uh, 27. Today's our third hard freeze in a row. We've got another one tomorrow night. And then we go back into um, almost 40 degrees at night. So but we're down. Display settings. I'll, I'll check that one, but I can't find it in there. I don't. I haven't seen it. Um, I keep. I keep taking some deep dives looking. So, but again, we're gonna have another hard freeze tomorrow night. But right now, it's 27 in the yard. So we're gonna go out and walk around and look at some things. Um, usually, I will have everything prepped, and I didn't think about this again until this morning. So, um, partly because I'm. I'm just gonna do one plant. And um, I'm gonna keep one one little coal of smoke off of it, but it's it's. Uh, <clears throat> I checked it a few days ago. The trichomes were pretty good. It's shade grown, and it also a bit a whole bunch of freaking gnats stuck onto the trichome. So we'll see the difference. Like like they're they're, they're stuck on it. But what's going on right now is like everything's hard frozen in the yard. All all my flower is exposed, and even some of the stuff that's under. Today we're going to be using bubble bags. Um, if I got time, we'll get onto the dry sift again. I got it set up, um, but this will, this will go a lot quicker than last week. I'm not going to have to describe everything. Basically, I uh, couldn't find my lopper, so I got a, I got a tree pruner set up on the base of the, of the plant. I'm going to just go out there and, and pull them, um, pull the cord and cut it. And uh, so, but normally I'll have everything set up the night before, and I'll show you what happens here when the temperatures start dropping and how I like it to work. When I was making a little bit of BHO, I would do passive and wait for it to get down to, um, we, we, we get sub-20 temperatures here and get down, it usually doesn't get much colder than 10 degrees, but Fahrenheit, and um, <clears throat> so we're in the negative Celsius is there. And um, at, those, at those levels, it, it, the passive is, is a lot easier just using hot tap water um, to drive the, the pressure gradients, right? And then um, some ice and... So uh, normally I will set I would set up <clears throat> multiple containers uh, the night before uh, utilizing my tap water to start with and I like using um, RO for my final rinses um, but the, um, I set them out stainless steel and, and plastic buckets and they partially freeze overnight. We'll take a look at some um, vessels that are frozen, but I, I got the idea, got them washed out everything and, and uh, 
the wind blows here and it blows dust in the stuff if I don't have it covered. So I've got to clean at the end of the process and the beginning of the process every time I start doing things. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll take a quick look at uh, solid frozen material. And the other neat thing we'll look at here is, so 27 degrees, uh, my experience tells me that um, the, the best of the land race genetics from Afghanistan and Pakistan up in the walking corridor. Um, I don't know if you caught, if you didn't catch Alley Seeds, the, the East Bay Seed Cooperative show yesterday was, was basically Kevin Jordry just like still fucking high on life. Just, yeah, I'm not. He did two and a half, three hours nonstop talking about his trip to uh, Pakistan. Check that out. Fucking awesome show. Um, but, uh, you know, they get up in some high elevations there, some cold temperatures. And, and, and if you look at any of the content those guys put out, you'll see those temperature changes. And um, they're, they're up at five, seven thousand feet higher than my location where I'm at right now. And stuff is freezing. Kind of like it. So at eight, nine thousand feet is our snow level here right now. Um, and I just applied last night for a job I used to do at the resort is this graveyard snowmaker. So we'll see how that uh, affects the show. It only goes for, for like two months at most, but uh, it's uh, 11.30 at night till till 8.30 in the morning. So um, display settings from your PC. Yeah, it's in my phone. It's not in the PC. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, I'll do a search, though, to, just to find it. I've changed it in the past, and I can't figure it out. Um, talking to people in chat, if you're seeing this without chat. So, okay, what are they talking about? High elevation, super cold temperatures, snow line, temperatures. It's 27 now, and I've tested and seen as long as there's warm, sunny days afterwards. And, like, yesterday was a tough one because it only got up to 40 degrees. Right, and so everything's really hard, solid, frozen right now. We'll see how recovery goes throughout the day, but um, generally 16 degrees is where, and the key factor I've seen that makes the big difference when it comes down to it is if the main stem gets froze solid and the ice in there explodes and it basically girdles and it blows all the, the, um, the, uh, the living layer gets separated, right? The bark gets girdled, and, and that kills it. And, and so, there's, um, so it's been a minute since I've used the term. There's a word for the little layer of cells alive and dead between the, the bark layer and the wood layer. And, um, it's not coming to me. Um, I bet it's in this book, though. I could find it real quick here. But that's not what we're here about. Um, anyhow, so yeah, that's that's generally if you're... Your plant explodes, that, that's killing it. So generally, they can recover just fine um, and, and, and uh, as long as there's sunshine again. So um, I have one more hard freeze tonight. We do have sunshine all day today. And then the next week we have back up to the uh, 60, 70s um, a day and 40 degrees at night. So I'm going to just do one plant today for this demonstration. And um, is, again, is this... Uh, be the smell off. So this is one of the rejects from my from my Breath of Green Dragon 300 selection this year for the F3 to F4 round. The smell is fucking delightful. Let's take a look though. And I, I kept this a few days ago. It's been sitting in the garage. Fire up the mic. Have the fire magnet in the the. the, the let me take a look at that there and see what we're looking at. And the other thing is, so I'm going to show you some bugs on here, and we'll look at it after I wash it when it's still wet, because I'm just going to freeze everything as I roll through, because um, I, I don't have a freeze dryer. I want to borrow a freeze dryer if I can. I've used various different methods otherwise to try and freeze dry stuff, and it always ends up caramelizing or even browning. And I want to see, I want to learn, I want to get it dialed in to make that nice, pretty, lighter color. The principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a law not recognized. There are many planes of causation. 
but nothing escapes the law, the Kabbalion. This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect, an effect for every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law, that nothing ever merely happens, that there is no such thing as chance, that while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing ever entirely escapes the law. The Hermetists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect to a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers instead of effects. The masses of people are carried along, obedient to environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about right. like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their moves, characters, qualities and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers instead of... So earlier on, I wasn't even saying anything, I was just moving my lips. So people come in, yeah, Kabbalion. Um, if you search Hermetic Teachings of Tawati, it's actually... Um, it's an appendium to Kabbalion, so it's Kabbalion Plus. Yeah, this is why I have the hashtag, I smoke bottoms. All right, so yeah, this stuff's going to be totally ready to fucking go. And again, this is dried for a few days, a little bit, half dried. The whole plant's going to be alive as we go into it. Let's check this in the tops here. Let's see what do we got over here. This is true not only of the physical plane, but of the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principal. So you see that black stuff? Those are like gnats, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if we can get in past the leaf on the top here. There we go. That's just leaf. So leaf tends to be done before the main body, right? When you're checking things, you don't necessarily want to check the leaf. You want to look at the flower structures, right? So if you can get past leaf, and I gotta, I gotta set the camera down and, and move some leaf to really get into it. But yeah, I don't think it's bug poo. There was when I was looking at it earlier, there was literally a whole bunch of. Um, a bunch of dead gnats on it, right? So they just got stuck to it, and they were... I think they might have been, like, um, adult flying aphids that were coming off of the um, the giant corn plant. We'll take a look at that. There's a giant corn plant above it, and the giant corn plant says the, the tassels are coming out. They fill up with aphids. And so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we're looking at there. Um, there's parts of those fuckers that have dried out at this point over the last week. So... But one thing I'm going to want to show is how it doesn't come through into the hash when we wash it like this. What would I do? I do tend to find it in the dry sift, though. You got to think, you know, it can come through. If you have shitty stuff. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of it, but I definitely. If you seek such teaching. Something that was concerning me when I first looked at this plant the other day. I'm really sorry to take a look at it, see if it's ready for harvest or not. Alright, so. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. Chapter 3. Dead bugs can start a lot of decay, but not so much. There is the ones that are on the surface. It depends on what they're at. And I know every garden, every place is different. Decay happens in bugs for various reasons, right? And I've had somebody, like, get all pissy on me. And it's like, okay, I have an agricultural sciences degree, okay? I've done laboratory and field science, right? And um, I'm, not, I'm not harping on this person. Maybe that, that is something that can happen. But I've had people who get on me for presenting what I've observed over 40 years of growing cannabis and doing hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of cycles I'm, I'm i stopped counting when i hit over 200 cycles right indoor outdoor pulling tarps 
right? So so I'm hitting multiples in your in your gear and in multiple gardens all over different places and in different slight micro comments and things, right? And and like one of the things I observe that causes some of the most of my bud rot is the first little pre-flowers, right? Or, or the little side bracts that come off of those, right? And those get mature first and become susceptible. Um, bug shit can definitely be um, the frass. Anything that's dead, literally anything that's dead in there or, or is necrotic is a, a point where, especially the boitreus, the boitreus can consume living material once it's established, but generally doesn't get established on living material without a dead thing. And then you need to have moisture build up and temperatures being right. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of factors that go on there. Huh. I think I need a new furnace. Anyhow, let's um, let's go on out there. We'll look at the bunch of frozen plants and um, we'll do this real quick. My hand's gonna be cold, I know that. It says enchant from Squishy Mirror, the ancient alchemist. Paras I'm gonna put these fuckers on here, right? Paracelsus has some interesting methods for extracting oils from different resins. I'd like to try those old methods with hash. Yeah, there's definitely some cool things. Uh, so my first wife is um is quite the goddess of essential oils and <clears throat> she does various different tech for travels the world and collects different essential oils and um like like we go around looking for seeds and plants and hash and things right um i'm just thinking what i'm gonna do here it's fucking cold out my hands are gonna get cold let's just go do this and i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug I don't know if there's enough power there, there should be. We'll set this outside so we can look up close. And then I'm gonna unplug you, take you with me. I didn't move that, did I? All right, well, we got a couple of a couple of points of set up here before, oh, close the door, close the door. Hot air coming out. So saying how, okay, so normally I would set up out beforehand and everything would be like naturally frozen water. And so even after putting some ice in, it looks like my water might not even be cold enough to do this properly. But I want to show you, that I'm going to do this demonstration. And so I learned that we could actually do this from listening to bird. But this is like, normally I would use my large vessel. You can see the ice formed on it. And as it gets colder, you get a lot more ice forms up. This has been sitting out and exposed and has a lot of um, blown in crap. I've had a few windstorms since I filled that up, so I'm not going to use this. I'd rather use the fresh and I'll hang it up and dry it twice. Um, great, got my hand wet already. So I do have, um, most plants are covered, right? But even, that's the, the alpine glow coming over. Again, it's, it's 27 degrees out. Plants are frozen. Chicken wash frozen. I put buckets of water out next to plants and they're beautifully so normally that's what I would have is a nice solid frozen bucket that I use okay and then this is some Durban land race it's 
So it's not completely frozen solid. Pretty frozen. And then under here, what we got is here's some sour D. That ain't so bad. Right, see? So it's still alive. You see this stuff here might start peeling. Back in here, there's still it ain't blown apart, and that's the important part. And that's where they'll blow apart. And so uh, you can some GMO. Hello. Here's GMO. See, it's it's wiggly, but it's it's solid froze. It's cold, right? But it ain't dead. They just, they're not almost, but not quite. So I've got a couple of other things covered out here, but like here's Hindu Kush. And I was saying, I got another 10 degrees before the Hindu Kush has issues. This stuff can go to where it's 16 degrees. Here's some Breath of Purple Dragon. But the tomatoes, the squashes. All right, so I got a couple layers on, a whole bunch of them here. These tomatoes are dead under this tarp. I just haven't pulled the tarp and then start cleaning. Here's pak choy. The pak choy bounces right back too. But it's like, it's frozen, it snaps. But it, it, if I don't snap it, it's alive. This one here is like perfect for washing, but for some reason I really want to smoke it. These guys will stand back up today. Yeah, you know, you'll stick back out in the sun. And again, as long as that fucker ain't blowing apart, plant's alive. Ethiopian barley is even withstanding this stuff and bouncing back from the hard freezes. Um, squash, unfortunately, nope. Beans, not really. Tomatoes, not happening. So I do have a candle burning underneath that tarp. And you can see the middle there has no frost on it. Right. And there's candles in the greenhouse. But again, here, we have these giant corn up here. And, uh, well, it's all gone now, but, okay, here's the, this is the plant. And, and you'll see, you'll be able to see the aphids in here. This is exactly what, you can see them in that leaf right there. All right, that's 12 feet up off the ground, though. All right, there's a bunch underneath that tarp too. It's all gonna get washed, it's nice and open. That's what I ought to fucking have, one of those coming out. That'd be better. Anyhow, we're gonna do this as the one. And I'm just gonna save one of these fuckers to smoke. It's flour, I think it's tasty. And then, um, I can find my loppers. But look at how, like this shit here is like, it's so, but it's not completely, it, just, I, I was looking at the weather and I saw this freeze is coming and I know it's only going to freeze so much. But again, they're froze. They're froze, but not completely solid, see? This stuff still has some flex to it, so it's not dead. It's nuts, and, but you wouldn't know it if somebody like me didn't fucking just test it. I really wanted to know what that Hindu Kush would do, so I, I let shit go down to 16 degrees, like I said. And that shit survived. Um, anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and oh, multiple parts come off there. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. All right. So I hadn't seen a freaking 
rodent in like six, seven months. So I started putting food in the compost pile again. And as I'm putting food in the compost pile, picking up fruit from the, the ground scores, fucking mice run out. Fucking rat runs out. The rat is like gray and gray and white, splotches of black spots. The fucking craziest thing. So I think this needs some. Normally, I would have this way more defoliated already. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little of that real quick. But I followed that rat, chased it with a pitchfork. I think, I think this is what I'm going to keep. What stinks so loud? I'm going to keep that for myself. Smoke. We'll wash the rest of this. Alright, so we've got this. It's too big to go in all at once. This would go in the trash can just nicely though. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, get, you know, split in thirds. But again, we got way too much. Big old fan leaves that don't got no sugar on them. Don't know that, right? Careful not to pull the whole bud off. It's actually got some big old solid nugs that I prefer not to wash, and I'll end up probably doing the second with these guys hanging not to dry after we do this, breaking them up. Um, I haven't test washed this or nothing. This is just straight demonstration for y'all. Uh, the ones I do know have tested that this does this. All right, so there's. It's all nice and firm right now, right? Again, the water is too warm, so they've already gone loose, and that's what will happen. You'll end up it'll all getting loose and exposed. Uh, Trying to get the vortex going. And snap it all off. Usually, I don't. Usually I just, boom, that's it, I'm done. Usually it's also, the water's a lot colder. It's way too warm for this process right now. I'm gonna do that, just so I can. Just gotta relieve this bad boy. So again, I didn't make this one up. I learned how to do this. Mr. Bird, Bird Extracts, suggested that this is a technique that he does. It'll take him tight, but he didn't. He's not doing the frozen plant. He's going into his workshop with a whole plant into his big uh, 30, 30 gallon vessel, 40, 50 gallon vessels that he does. All right. So, again, we got big ones off there, and then you can take really large portions. It's all on. I don't know if I'm going to get any release off of this. I think I'm seeing some milking in the water though. <clears throat> there went some. We'll drown if I can shatter. 
you see what birds offer in a class in December where they're uh, making rosin diamonds. He's brought in a couple of other masters to really get the process and, and teach all these different aspects of how to make that super high grade. And uh, I wish I wasn't broke because I would fucking go. Alright, so here we have Vortex also. Alright, Vortex is huge. You've got that water moving. And that's what knocks off that cold frozen trichome head. And we saw on the microscope from, from a few days ago already, this, this plant was like so ready to drop this head at a time. So again, it's 27 degrees. Here under the porch, maybe a little colder out. And this this wouldn't even be a quarter pound of dry material, right? I don't think. So we're not expecting a huge return. What's this guy looking like? Living dead, kind of. It smells so awesome. This plant has an amazing um, gas and skunk with just the lightest citrus undertones to it. So I'm really excited to keep a little smoke. Pretty much it's, I have it stocked. I mean, only have small quantities of any particular people aren't so into mixed bags, even if it's the same genetic sisters just how it was traditionally back pre-1990 when they started really doing mass production of clones indoors in the mid 80s right is when that really started taking off and so oh i meant to look the tri comes on here and everything beforehand they're still, there's gotta be some in there. And that limper stuff is a little bit tougher to really get a good one. But I'm definitely seeing milky in the water. So we're gonna have a wash. And have something in the bags. <clears throat> so these, a lot of this stem has gone loose. And a lot of times that stays stiff and you can really get a good look at it out through all of it. And Bring out. I have that thing, so. See how far the, the wash is gone. So we can compare. Oops, fell back in. Let me see here. It's falling back in. I see some heads left, but for the most part, open stock. So I'm going to do a little more. One of the biggest problems I'm, I'm incurring right now is the water just ain't cold enough. So we'll see. But that's the top where it was. I just opened it up. Let's look at down here where it was more of an exposed flower. Hmm. 
Sorry. Having a hard time getting... Well, I'm not seeing heads. Why can't I focus on this wet shit? Like, no. There we go. So where was exposed? Come on. I'm like utterly failing here. There's still some heads too. We'll we'll stir this some more. All right. <laughs> What are, what are people saying in comments? Yeah, right now I'm, 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 my biggest problem is my water's not cold enough because I had to start, I had to start this bucket this morning, clean water. Um, chirps are holding, yes. Vortex is awesome. Fresh is best. Whip it. First frost tonight in Illinois. Cold nights means great weather for hash making. Exactly. Plants. Ex Experiment with fresh frozen on stock, but attaching stocks to a square palm sander and let the sonic vibrations to break the heads off in cold air. Nice, nice. Who's that? That's Green Table Gardens. Elemental Growth is doing an immigration station today for Psychonauts TV. Should be a great episode. Vibration should work. Who's the guy with Ken's voice? Who's Ken? Alright, we'll beat the shit out of this a little more. But... Like I said, there's milky, milky looking water already, so this might be one where I'm saying I'm going to pull it out and dry it again. So I'll do another vortex, I think. Where? Oh, here, I got this thing. Let me do this. Anyhow, usually I don't strip them off. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Usually the water's a lot colder. It's actually fucking warm, so... This sucks. I'm gonna go ahead and get a really good vortex with my paddle, and we'll call it good. I just don't have any more ice, so I'd be loading some in. Get a little bit from here. Well, that's cold. There's a whole nother concept. But, um, that was cold water, but it was more demonstration than anything. I do want my good hash out of this plant. Small motion makes a lot of rotation. You do it right. And I'm pivoting off my upper hand. Reduce the amount of actual force I need. Well, no. Energy, because I'm using a pivot, right? So, um, fulcrum exponentially increases force from energy applied. Where's that other 
Here it is. Oh yeah, we got we got a good multi color in here for all things considered. Again, I'm gonna do this a second wash, so I rarely do, but I'm gonna refreeze it and get it into some colder water and see what comes off of it. It's not very much, is it? hairs out of there. This is before I put it in. So I know a lot of people like doing this. Um, in the basket, in the net, in the, in the bags, in the screen. To put the screen inside of in, inside their big 30 gallon vessel. And to me that just seems like bad business. To me it seems like um putting the bag in your work vessel even if it's your work bag you're going to end up um damaging the bag all right and then i want all that out before i even go to my work bag okay so um there's my work bag right here Let's see, I have here my scooper. Uh no, that needs a bath. We'll just dump. We'll go ahead and dump it today. Oh, I need to get there some that fresh leaf fell into my high grade bag. Alright, so I don't wanna just dump. I wanna um Um here I'll take you with me. Musical interlude, musical interlude. I'm gonna get my dumper and, and clean it because that's a freaking heavy. Rooster's out asking for food. All right. So, and yeah, again, this is one of my reject breeder select. Who would I? Out of 300, I basically go through and reject 90% to start with. And um, a lot of people ask how I select, and it's for uh, I'm calling things, calling things, and calling things, and, and then I go through what's left and continue. I, I definitely have checklists that I've been using the same checklist for four years. Growing seed, bringing it out to find the best keeper, mother plant, etc. Of course, the criteria change because we don't grow in a closet anymore, do we? Right? And I went to go get a bulb, uh, a lamp for my for my life. I had a bunch of my, my greenhouse heater died last year, and I haven't been able to replace it. And uh, I got a bunch of the Zakistani rock candy and the Dr. Remalt here all ready to, for crop that just ain't gonna happen in the greenhouse so I went ahead and bought a, a lamp fired up a hard wall I haven't run it in years and the guy's like all, all all of the lamp boxes are covered in dust right they're like nobody uses those anymore <laughs> you're like the first one in like a couple of years I think Everyone's using the LED. Yeah, no one's giving me an LED yet, so. Right, okay, let's see. I need to move computer. Let's see. I mean, this isn't going to be anything huge. But it's got a green color to it. Let's see what it did yet. It might not have anything. It might be hallucinating if there's smoky colors. I don't see it now.
Just gotta poke around. Just gotta poke around. There's definitely like more bugs and soil material in the work bag than um, leaf. Yeah, I might be mistook. I might be stuck on this. I really th so the biggest problem here was the freaking. I don't see shit in there. This water in here is too fucking warm. So I'll rework that stuff and hopefully get something decent out of it. That's the process I wanted to show you though. Here's the sunshine coming through. See it on my hand? No, not there. Over here. There's some sunshine. Sunshine on my hash making is not so happy. What's funny is there's actually going to be some, but. Last week was great production. That's all in the freezer, though. I'm not. Um... I want to get a dehydrator, proper de so many ways I've dehydrated it and it always ends up, the last thing I do with it, it ends up browning. And people don't want it. It's to... It ain't a pretty color with color remediation. Right, color remediation with, 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 with added terpenes. And people think that's normal. Whatever, what do you do? What do we get do? What else is there to look at? Oh, it's fucking cold out here though. Here we go, pull some sun's coming out. Chicken chicken wants some food. Here this is the new thing, He's letting the rooster eat out of my hand. So I'm slowly training him. He's scared to death of me for still, he's been around for years and I, I've held him like twice when I've been able to capture him. But, so I'm just getting him used to eating out of my hand. It took a while to get him to even eat out of my hand. Eventually I'll start petting him. Being as he's the last one, I want him to be comfortable coming in the house when it's fucking cold. And I'll put them in a box or a pen or something. Or They actually do pretty good. And he's got feathered feet. So when it's below 20, they don't like walking in the... They don't like walking out in the yard when it gets really fucking cold. Um... Sun comes in and hits this one. Some sour diesel. That Durban land race. But again, it ain't dead yet. Uh, let it keep going. It's got these little greenhouses here. Um, shit. Here's some fun shit. So we have bulk cleanup around here. People throw out, and I'm like reduce, reuse, recycle type of guy. Been wanting to do this for 30 years or so. Um, What do you think you're looking at here? This 
steel drum. So I'm working on, and, and I'm using Cannonball. And I've got another one. So I'll be making myself a set of pans to play when I smoke this killer hash. Um, fuck, I need another bucket right now. They're all full of something. <clears throat> so anyhow, not a bad demonstration for off the cuff. Oh, oh shit. Got that you just just the nick of time. Here's a fun little setup that I gotta get around to taking care of. Rotten apples into the apple cider. There's some less rotten apples. For apple pie. Look at this green tomato. I didn't quite get all my green tomatoes out this year. Let's see. Oops. Let's see. I gotta dump the rest of this out. Set you guys down again. Well, I really hope there's at least some in the bag to show how this stuff nicely cleans out and all. So, and then you, you, you definitely want to have a spritzer of some sort. Backpack spritzers are definitely better. Oh, this thing's freezing. Hopefully it ain't frozen. What did I do? I let it freeze solid. Oh, there we go. Right. So, again, there ain't, there ain't a whole lot of anything in the bag, uh, the, the work bag, right? It's, and I like that. Because you end up, if, you, if you're working in the work bag, you end up, one, you, you work the bag, right? The bag gets used sooner. It wears out. And then, but you got to get your product past all the debris in the work bag. And that shouldn't even be, you should just be catching the, like, the garbage that's coming through. And then there, look, nothing over here, huh? You don't have a bunch of, when you do either... Um, either way, frozen or um, fresh like that. As long as the plant material hasn't dried out, you don't end up having a bunch of crap accumulating in the first two. So if you even have like 180, like you can see there's, that's probably more. Like we'll look at that under the scope and see what that is in the 180. Spraying will wash, push through with pressure, or push through whatever you might want to get through. If it stocks, uh -oh, got a leaf in that one. Let's see, I want to shut this down so I have water in there to work. This was 150. All right. And this is outdoor. Underneath that corn plant, there's all sorts of fucking. And then sand splashing up in. But I think. Look at that in the scope, too. Dump this whole. What's 
in this one here. You guys look at the scenery again. Stand by for this. Hey, yo, intermission. Anything? Do we catch? Is there any fish in the net? Any fish in the net? Do we catch any fish in the net? Do that good bait out. I don't think there's any fish in the net. Oh, look at that. There's a fish in the net. What do you know? It's like it's like panning for gold in a creek that's got gold in it. It's always gonna be there. Crabs in the pot. There's my spritzer on. Wash it. Oh, this is nasty. Ah, fucking outdoor sucks. <laughs> That's the funniest. Is like when I made hash of the stuff I'd make in uh, Gorilla Grows. It would always just be like so dirty. <laughs> just... But for what we just did, it's not that little really. Let's see, Can you see it at all? It, but it's most of it. There's still much more in the bag there. But anyhow, this is straight demonstration purposes. So good enough for what we're doing here. My hands are cold. Oh, Alright, right, let's try. Um, let's see, let's see. We're going to do this. Let's see how. <clears throat> mm. 
Yeah, this looks like shit. Completely failed demonstration. Can you see? Oh, it fell. No wonder. I fucking had it. Usually I don't see this kind of crap coming through. But unless it's dry. But there's a ton of shit coming right on through. Ew! Anyhow, that that is a you you'd all see the um, the example that started from underneath that. Um, corn plant with all those bugs in the top of it right so that's not normal outdoor at all but um pretty cool to see that's like totally worst case scenario right um but it also tell you though washing stuff that's full of mites and stuff right that's the same thing it's like you're not going to clean it up by washing it okay so uh, otherwise, though, that was actually some pretty, pretty beautiful. There wasn't any other stuff in there. There was no plant material. Just whatever frass that was. Sorry, I'm fucking cold. My fingers froze. Um, usually, I wear a lot more clothes when I do that kind of stuff as well. So cool. We all learned something there. It's fun doing that shit with the microscope to really see what's going on too, right? Um, but that's the process. And and again, usually it's not growing underneath the aphid laden corn plant and, and if you missed that go back and take a look i totally zoomed in on when i cut the plant to show that um sorry i'm gonna sit here and warm up before i think about what else i could possibly do today anyhow well, let me know what you thought of that i think it was kind of lame i wanted to show you guys a really beautiful hash at the end <laughs> sorry um but again, that's the same. It's a it's a great lesson. Um, no holds barred, right? Mole mole cat doma. Um. Oh, that doesn't taste good. Should we read? Oh, let's do let's do. For some reason, I forgot all about these. I wanted to add this new feature. The beans in the scale. Who in, who out? No, that's the, exactly it. Right? I don't normally grow underneath giant corns the first year. First year I've grown the giant corn at home. And, um... The perfect, perfect example to see it don't wash out. Shark fins got it right there. Poo in, poo out. And how you could even, you can't clean that really, right? That's just, uh, luckily that's not my only plant. <laughs> um, definitely easier than freezing it all. And so the way Bird does it is... Um, like he said, I, I, I sound like when, when he described it was um, he'd just go out and he'd have his tanks already in his cold room with chill ice water and he'll go on a cold night. It doesn't necessarily freeze where they're at um, all over the place, but it can get down there in the 40s or whatever. And you're really, so where's our working temperature is like 33 degrees. Alcohol extract would sterilize it, yeah. Um I don't know. That's it's a small. It's like I've. I, that's that's just unnecessary for me to even keep though. And I know there's been times I've tried to teach people how to salvage. B Y R D. Someone's asking how to find Bird um, Instagram B Y R D, and then he's occasionally on Future Cannabis Project One channel. All right. 
How to break a fever in the wild. Is it A, drink an infusion of elm bark. B, sit as close to a fire as possible to sweat out the fever. Or C, get into the coldest possible water until a fever reduces. It's all over outdoor. If you look, it's, there is quite often. And then like, so something else that you can do with cleaning, with dealing with outdoor and cleaning and stuff. And like, even in my greenhouse, like if I don't have the spring, the, the drip line set up, I'm spraying water in and there's, there's splash, right? Um, I'm sure you've experienced that where there's soil splash. Even if you've got a ground cover down and stuff, you can end up having soil Spot or, or, or buds get heavy and laden. You can wash. Had I had that not been totally frozen and I had the three bucket system, and there's a great way for washing outdoor. And when you do this, you're like, oh my God, there's that much crap in there. And just like Shark Fin is saying, if you look close enough, um, we got one answer of C coming in in chat. Like who else is who else wants to, to venture an answer there? So so but if you wash, you got three rinse buckets, right? And you take you take you know, bucket size, two foot pieces, foot and a half long pieces of branch. And you can um, not vigorously shake it, but gently shake it in warm water. Okay. So we've discussed how hash takes that cold, cold water. And I wasn't even cold enough to really knock off all the heads. Okay. And then um, I bet when I wash this again, I'll get a much cleaner, all that poop's gone already because what happened, it did get a good vigorous washout. But so and I have to talk, I'm trying to remember, do we do, one of them's going to have hydrogen peroxide in it. I think it's, I don't think it's the second or the third one, but if you have three buckets of water, right? And the first one is the one you kind of shake it in. The second one you rinse it in. And the third one is the one that's the full on rinse, right? And so the first two buckets will get dirty. So I guess you, you put the little hydrogen peroxide to sterilize in the third one. And it does it's not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then you can hang those to dry in the shade and drip dry off or whatever. And you can actually, you can have good smoke and flower that way. And, or you, after it gets mostly the water dried, you can um, go ahead and freeze that stuff after it's drip dried. Okay. So definitely, um, you know, greenhouse is going to be way cleaner than full on outdoor. The wind's blowing stuff around. Doesn't matter what bugs. That definitely is one of the worst case scenarios. Again, shy of the plant being fully infested itself with aph uh, with aphids and and, and uh, let's see what, what was the question again. So, how to break a fever in the wild? Drink an infusion of elm bark. Sit as close to a fire as possible to sweat out the fever. Or C, get into the coldest possible water until fever reduces. People uh, are saying birch bark aspirin. Birch bark. So I don't know if birch bark actually. Birch bark has willows got aspirin. Yes, the willow tips are, are where the aspirin comes from. But that is, as far as these ones go, it's the elm bark, slippery elm. Chickens up on the porch looking for more food. All right, there's nothing there for him to ruin. Um, yeah, I don't know if this this might just be a drunkard's game. So uh, birch, birch definitely. I don't know birch as well. It's more of an eastern. We do have some birches around here, and, and, and some small river, uh, river birch, um, and then ornamental paper birch. The reverse has how to find civilization without a compass. A, follow terrain downhill to a creek, stream, river, or, or river. The water will flow to civilization. B. Walk in concentric circles, gradually expanding the circles until civilization is found. Or C, follow the sun's path until civilization is found. Well, there's there's the... Who have ventured to seek the truth. The question is, why does the all create universes? Why does the, the all create may be universes? Asked in different forms, but the above is the gist of the inquiry. Yeah. 
Men have striven hard to answer this question, but still there is no right. answer worthy of the name. Thing, yeah. Some have imagined that the all had something to gain by it, but this is absurd. For what could the all gain that it did not already possess? Others right. have sought the answer in the idea that the all was something to love, and others that it created for pleasure or amusement. Um, here, let's look at, let's look at, um, where did I put that? I brought it in. There it is. last week's or at least the um the stuff that I didn't take right away so this was outdoor too it's like there's a little bit in there or is that just darkness no Ew! dirt it's not necessarily bug poo because there weren't no bugs in there. This was um like the 180. This is the all is unknowable. Interesting. Outdoor sucks. I've got an amazing crop in the in the greenhouse though. Wine? What's someone saying about wine? You know what's crazy though is people have been fucking doing this forever, right? Without the microscopes, no one would ever know. <laughs> no, seriously, right? Think about that. Okay, people are like all freaky, like, oh, what's that? We were like, people have been smoking hash forever with that stuff in it. What do we got here though? Is um what the fuck? I'm having a hard time here. I don't know what the fuck's happening. There we go. I got I got Cabernet Sauvignon grapes I need to process today. So, anyhow, I'm all depressed now from looking at all this shit under the microscope. <laughs> what should we do for the next ten minutes? Do we got a suggestion? That was a flop. I'm over it. I'm ready to go be a wage slave or something. Drill into trunk, add pipe into bottle to collect sap. Smoke some hash. Chill. It's all good. I'm just thawing out. I got a cat. It's really hard to keep the fucking small fibers out. Um, my favorite terpene. Um, 
I like a lemon mushroom combo. But also, um, lemon mushroom tar um, pining. It's fucking very elusive. Um, and then lemon tr um, le lemon mushroom um, pining and um, Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember the, um, there's menthol, and then the other one, humaline. The humaline is, um, I haven't started any pipes. I'm, today, though, I really, like, I took, I, I applied for a job this morning. And I don't know if I can get, if I get, I don't plan it when I get laid off from that job in the end of December, I want to start carving some wood again. And it, does, it sucks having a fucked up body, period. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Hum, humulene is my favorite, the earthy. And like a lot of times with humulene, people think it's like, it's so earthy. They almost think it's moldy flavor, right? It's musty or earthy. And it's kind of the smell you smell when the rain smell uh, smell comes and the and the bacteria put off a a smell from the earth, right? Um, that's definitely those are those are my you know so so all of those things if you can if you can overlay those with um if you can uh, uh, um, with the skunk smells the skunk terps. Mm. Right, some alcohol, some 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 um, sulfur sulfurated alcohols. That's that's where, for me, that's my happy place. Um. Yeah. So, what I really need to get back to do doing here, and then like, so I made these coins, right? Really, really cool. Silver, gem proof production coins, right? And like, I really, I keep. It's funny, is is like, I keep showing these, and like when 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 the video comes up on my, it's me showing them, but they're all fucking out of focus. Here, let's do this. Why is it backwards? The question is generally about as follows. Is that backwards to you guys? That's weird. Or is it merely um, or space? The answer is no, not a place, but ordinary dimension of space. Selling them's a whole nother story. Right, and here's um and when gold's going up, get it while you can. I'm gonna make this into tenth ounces today. This is uh three quarters of an ounce. So I'm gonna break it in. It's 21 grams. I'm gonna make uh, six, six tenth ounces and a little change. Um, but I bought a piece of equipment. Thomas helped me buy this uh, this roller so where I can take the silver and I can make wire and bands. And um, I've got so much wood. I, I really wish I had a little lathe though. But um, I'm gonna do some some uh, silver embellished stone and wood combo pipes i think and really get into some heavy deep art again um shutting down the garden because it's not paying the mortgage and um fixing up the house to rent have some other people pay the mortgage so i don't need to i don't need to um chase slave slave wages so I bought this house in the first place was to rent the rooms out and be able to travel around and do whatever the fuck. And I can visit other people's farms and things like that, right? Um, go to some festivals, some some weed, some weed good times. Go smoke, carry some hash with me, and, and expose people to old school style that I got aging away beautifully. I did bring that over here, didn't I? I didn't. 
vibration, the higher the plane. And so the higher the manifestation of life occupying that plane. So that while a plane is not a place, nor yet a state or condition, yet it possesses qualities common to both. We shall have more to say regarding the subject of the scale of vibrations in our next lessons, in which we shall consider the hermetic principle of vibration. You will kindly remember, however, that the three great planes are not actual divisions of the phenomena of the universe, but merely arbitrary terms used by the hermetists in order to aid in the thought and study of the various degrees and forms of universal activity in life. The atom of matter, the unit of force, the mind of man, and the being of the archangel are all but degrees in one scale, and all fundamentally the same, the difference being solely a matter of degree and rate of vibration. All are creations of the all, and have their existence solely within the infinite mind of the all. I would the love to sell paintings of weed plants. planes into seven minor planes, and each of these latter are also subdivided into seven subplanes. All That's what I should do this afternoon, actually, is set up my paints. And I've never and sat up there for and actually done a, a plein air painting of a weed plant. The great physical plane and its seven minor planes. There's a lot going on. Of the phenomena of the universe, which includes all that relates to physics or material things, forces, and manifestations. It includes all forms of that which we call matter, and all forms of that which we call energy or force. I don't know if you can see remember the light the passing through it. Does not recognize this is that shit stuff I was itself, just showing you. Or having a separate existence even in the mind of the all. The teachings are that matter is but a form of energy. So I let that air dry. That energy at a low rate of vibration it's like the, of a certain kind. The one fifty ninety, I think. The hermitists classify from last week under the head of energy. Fresh frozen. And give to it three of the seven minor planes of the great physical plane. These seven minor physical planes are as follows. One, the plane of matter A. Two, the plane of matter B. Three, the plane of matter C. Four, the plane of ethereal substance. Five, the plane of energy A. Six, the plane of energy B. Seven, the plane of energy C. That was weird. The plane of matter literally A just jumped off comprises the, the flower. forms of matter in its forms of solids, liquids, and gases, as generally recognized by textbooks on physics. You know, yeah, some big giant the plane ones. Of matter B. Being in the scene, who you know is huge. More subtle forms of matter of the existence, you know, of which you modern science is but now recognized. The phenomena of radiant matter in its phases of radium, etc., belonging to the lower subdivision of this minor plane. The plane of matter C comprises forms of the most subtle and tenuous matter, the existence of which is not suspected by ordinary scientists. The plane of ethereal substance comprises that which science speaks of as the ether, a substance of extreme tenuity and elasticity, pervading all universal space and acting as a medium for the transmission of waves and energy, such as light, heat, electricity, etc. This ethereal substance forms a connecting link between matter, so-called, and energy, and partakes of the nature of each. The Hermetic teachings, however, instruct that this plane has seven subdivisions, as have all of the minor planes, and that, in fact, there are seven ethers instead of but one. Next, above the plane of ethereal substance, comes the plane of energy A, which comprises the ordinary forms of energy known to science, the seven subplanes being, respectively, heat, light, magnetism, electricity, and attraction, including gravitation, cohesion, chemical affinity, etc., and several other forms of energy indicated by scientific experiments but not as yet named or classified. The plane of energy B comprises seven subplanes no of higher forms of energy, not as yet discovered by science, but which have been called nature's finer forces, and which are called into operation in manifestations of certain forms of mental phenomena. Let's try something. And by the way, such phenomena oh, becomes possible. Oh, forgot. 
This the plane of energy to... C comprises seven subplanes of energy so highly organized that it bears many of the characteristics of life, but which is not recognized by the minds of men on the ordinary plane of development, being available for the use of the beings of the spiritual plane alone. It's the Halloween show. It's unthinkable to ordinary men. <laughs> they may consider it almost as the divine power. The beings employing the same, or as gods, compared even to the highest human types known to us. The great Can I smoke a bowl like this? It doesn't fucking work. No I'm telling you. You can't get the lighter to go. <laughs> except to the occultists. The classification of the seven minor mental planes is more or less satisfactory and arbitrary <coughs> unless accompanied by elaborate explanations which are foreign to the purpose of this particular work. But we may as well mention that they are as follows. One, the plane of mineral mind. Two, the plane of elemental mind. A. Three, the plane of plant mind. Four, the plane of elemental mind. B. And this thing will set up. Then it can work. I haven't painted in the studio in a minute. I was thinking I wonder. like this. Is that from 22, 22 and done. Anything of the sort. Things I need. Do this. You know. This is something I'm bummed about. So it just froze. I gotta clean up a bunch of the stuff out in the garden and get the garlic down. Never need a rice clip, right? So anyone wants um I, I got a bunch of these cactus for sale. I, the greenhouse ain't going this winter. I got all sorts of um, aloe vera pups too. And there's the plumeria. I'm gonna bring that in. Jade plant. Citrus. I thought there's some more cactuses. I thought I had. There it is. I got the dry stuff set up. I'm just, I don't feel like doing that. Um, I'm gonna need to carry both of these objects. So it snowed again yesterday. I've been skiing twice now, and I'm going skiing today again. Can we go hike up? 
Blisters. Fucking awesome. So yesterday in, in um, someone on Kevin's show mentioned they were talking about hash, pulled it out, and then prepped it. And one thing I was talking about back there, it's like it's not hash until you prep it. Right? And everyone's like, it's garden. And garden means dust or powder. And I'm like, yeah. It's a powder until you heat it up and, and then it becomes hash, right? Just like powder snow is powder snow until it's been reheated. It becomes it's going to work. So, can't quite see it unless I raise it up. Yeah, you know, someone's an OG. Like, this is my apron. So here's here's my the palette I'm using today. This is gonna be like the tenth painting I've ever done on it. But there's there's two I've worn out. I just haven't ridden the bicycle for a minute. I'm not really doing this. dryer speeds up the drying and uh, it's a medium there's different kinds of mediums okay so and this is uh, terpenoid So I'm just going to use the paint that's on here. I got to break the skins. Open each one up. Alright, so what do we have here? We got phthalo green, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. All Zillrillion Crimson, Cadmium Red, Cad Orange, Cad Yellow, um, holding up the pedals at. What is that? Yellow Ochre. Yellow Ochre. Alright, so you can use tools to really get your measurements proportioned and everything. Let's see, I never cleaned. Gotta scrape off the old stuff. So if I get see the gray over here, I'll take all the colors and mix them together in between layers. I usually do three layers. You guys ever watch Bob Ross? I didn't. 
Not until, as an adult, for all these people coming and going, dude, Bob Ross, you're Bob Ross. Because I paint outdoors usually, right? People just come walking up to me and see the landscape painting and, dude, bro, Bob Ross, wow. All right. So there's something missing here. I really need, oh, did I take them? There they are. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm scraping off the old paint from the last painting, which usually I should do, but it was freezing and got dark while I was working and I hadn't played this game in forever. It's always best to finish, but all right, which hill? Oh, wow, I don't have either. Okay, so the two darks I use, we'll just use, we'll just do this. This is purple comes from the, um, Ultramarine blue and the all Zerillion crimson. And what appears to be black over here, which is just all glare in your guys' view. Um, there. Alright, so that is actually the green and the red. They're all Zerillion crimson and the phthalo green. Phthalo green is like the most potent pigment. Just a teeny little bit of it goes. It gets everywhere. It goes all over. It's all over my car. It's all over. Um, ooh, hey, high bid auction. I can go buy some jewelry and stuff. All right, so but what are we going to do today? What's funny is I've had this since I was a kid. And it's called Alexander's Magic Bush. Is that the one? That's not the one. Never mind. Do I have that one still? I don't see it. This one I've had since I was a kid. It's, no, I'm not gonna use that one either. It needs some love. I haven't painted in a while, so we'll just use this one. And there's definitely different ways to start any sort of painting, right? And I'm gonna, oh, this is gonna be quick. Quick and dirty. So I'm bringing some of the alkyd to the center of the board here, and then I'm gonna open up my um, burnt sienna. An ultramarine blue and really going in for that burnt sienna big oh yeah look at that. there we go and and then lots of turpentine and lots of alkaloid and um, so the guy who I really study under he, he would cover the whole painting kind of surface with purple doing this from far away is tough let's see So I've got basically three different compounds going on the board at one time and we want to have that all mixed in at a good even rate across. The board is a piece of wood that's been prepared with um, probably some, some, some cheap house paint that I bought from the oops section to start with and do a layer or two of that and put some texture underneath and you can kind of see that texture come through as I, as I do this underlayment. Um, this is a monotone, monochromatic under painting, is how I'm starting here. And we want to mix all of that chroma, all the paint, all the pigment with the terpenoid and the alkaloid, right? And then, oh yeah, so, so there's a, an acrylic gesso, which is basically white chalk. An acrylic base from a base structure there. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the crazy thing. We now move to the most important part of how we oil paint is Q-tips. All right, so quick and dirty. Standing here looking at myself in the mirror, and I need to align with things in the background so I can stand in the same place every time. Look at where my toes are. I got lined up on the rug. I haven't done this for flipping ever, so I'm going to start with.
Again, yeah, this is going to be from my vantage point, what I'm seeing. It's tough because the head moves, the whole picture changes. Okay, so besides the Q-tips, other tools I'll use for this. Oh, where are they? Where are they? Here we go. Probably going to be in here. They're not. A bunch of brushes, though. Um, whoops. Where is... I bet these little rubber tip things are so cool. Where are they? Hmm. Interesting. Where I put them? They look like paintbrushes, but they're not. Interesting. Where are the fuck they go? Here's some. But I have tons, I have a whole bunch of them and they're all different sizes. So there's like rubber tips. All right, so. The other thing we do at this point too, is using the same brush, same everything is so, highlight and dark. So the darkest line is going to be, I usually don't carry my palette over here, but. Right into there. Um, I think I'm a little low on my eyeballs, or high on the eyeballs there even. So one thing I'm not doing here at all is, is the technical standard uh, measurements. And so, um, yeah, at this point, we would use various brushes. You're not seeing what I'm doing there at all. So, super, super, um, just. Barely getting started on things there. Okay, so, but what happens is, we start um, continuously pulling paint, create highlights. But what, where it should be starting though is literally here on, on the eyes. And getting one, two, three, four, five. So you want five and a half eye lengths across, right? We've got one and a half to the bottom of the nose. So I need got highlights here. The various planes, not just in, in the hermetic sense, but here in different features of the face, right? So I'm too wide over here.
So you then from here you add more dark, you add more light, add more dark, you add more light, and and so let's see, I want to go. Notice I'm using the largest brush still. Anyhow, it just keeps going and going and going and going, and you just keep adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting, and and uh, you end up getting uh, more and more detail and more and more accurate position of everything on the lines and the. But I can tell you right now, I'm I'm, I'm inaccurate in a couple of different positions here as far as spatial relationships on. So Q-tips might just start smearing things around. You can see it's, it, I'm a little squat this way. Or should be, should be a little less in here. Anyhow, yeah, I didn't take any measurements and that's what you can see happens. That ain't, not quite me. Ah! Holy cows it is.
right? Um, yeah, it takes a lot of work to get that to get back into painting. Let's watch this. We can make this go back in. We can correct anything. Let's see. That one's no good. Let me get a better one. Let's see. All right, so what did I do? I blew, blew out that whole side there. Now let's do some measurement. I think that needs to come down for the biggest thing. So this is actually, what I just did is one of the techniques I learned from Bob Ross, where you take a brush and beat the shit out of it and adjust things. And, um, Jar put all my brushes in. It's not sitting here. And there it is. That's what I'm looking for.
Again, beating the crap out of it, and then you come back and redo all the all the details.
So what I'm doing here is adjusting light to dark balances and looking for several planes of, of light to dark in order to um, establish three dimensionality. And the process just keeps going like that and keeps going like that and keeps going like that. But I got a bunch of other things to do today and I bet you do too. So um, usually um, it takes quite a bit of concentration and shit and, and to get these to work, but uh, Wow, that's scary, huh? It's kind of funny because it's the same process I use for... Oops, what did I do? Wrong thing. But I'm out of practice, right? Super out of practice right now. Where's um the one that's like really nice? So if I was in practice... And had something better than my own ugly mug to work on. In that period of time, I did this piece right here. Then we can readily see how a certain rate of vibration or polarization of when I was in may be communicated to another person, and its polarity in that class of mental states. This one here, I came in with a little bit of extremely light blue. To highlight it. The mental treatments are obtained. But basically the same thing. A person is blue, melancholy, and full of fear. A mental scientist bringing his own mind up to the desired... Pen and ink is great. Color scary. Do a selfie. ...obtaining the desired polarization in his own case, then produces a similar mental state in the other by induction. Appreciate y'all hanging out watching me. The vibrations are raised. We learned something with the hash the today. Definitely garbage in, garbage out. The end of the scale. Nothing of new, the right? See y'all next time. Same bat channel, same bat time. He's up. Go out in the world and make it a better place with the meat suit he was born to do. Dude.